Well, hello, Ridge family. It's my great honor to be able to bring to you today our midweek report. It's the Wednesday of the week leading up to Easter. And so excited to be able to share with you today. As a matter of fact, Pastor Roger asked if I would do a kind of a little bit of a summary on missions and a little bit even about what does missions look like in the current climate that we're in. So it's my great honor to be able to do that. The first thing I want to show, though, is a number that many of you are getting familiar with. And that number is all about, uh, it's just a way for people to be able to connect with us. This number, if anybody texts this number, if anybody calls this number, it will come, whatever it is that they text or even say on the voicemail, it would come to one of about eight of us on your team here uh, in the form of a text. That allows multiple people to be able to see it and get back quickly with whoever that's texting in. Now, the reason why I start with that is I'm going to reference that number multiple times throughout this, this next few minutes together. And so I'd love for you right now to grab a pen, write it down, punch it into your phone, take a picture of this. The perk there is you'll also have a picture of me. And whenever we get back together, if you want, I'll sign that for you. But anyhow, uh, hey, or I know you can watch this again and I know what you'll do. You'll fast forward through the part where my mouth is, is moving until you get to this graphic and that's fine as well. But I really want us to have this phone, at our, this phone number at our fingertips because it's a great way for people who are in need that we come across to be able to reach out to the church. So if you would write that down and then, uh, and then I'll make reference to it, as I mentioned before, a couple of times as we go through this uh, report here on, on this Wednesday. So uh, first of all, let me talk about international missions. That's my, my goal today is talk to you a little bit about missions. Uh, here's what we're doing. We have, as you all know, 23 missionaries and or organizations worldwide that we have the privilege to partner with in prayer and through finances on a monthly basis. I want you to know that those missionaries, all of them are still funded. Everything's going great. We're going to continue continue to fund those. In large part, though, listen, because of your incredible generosity. Church, I'm telling you, you have just been mind-boggling in how you've continued to give and give and give. I've never met your equal. You're just such a blessing. I mean, I know it's not as convenient to give. Many are giving online. Many are even dropping it by the church office because we're open from Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, many are, are mailing it in, but God bless you and thank you for your incredible generosity. These missionaries worldwide wide are still being taken care of and and you know I just want you to know that in the process of that I know this church for decades has operated in the way of just praying asking God what he wants you to do and being obedient to that call and that always gets the job done but you have no idea how blessed we are how proud we are of you if that's the appropriate word to use because you just honor the Lord and are just such a sacrificial givers. If you want to know about those 23 missionaries so you can pray for them by name, you've already seen up on the screen, as you know at the end of last year you were given a trifold from uh, the Ridge to the Regions, Missions at a Glance 2020 and uh, 21 of those 23 missionaries are listed. With Church for Mission we've added two more since then and uh, those are both in relation to our unengaged people group our, our unreached people group rather that we've engaged in uh, Senegal West Africa the H people as we refer to them as and both are leaders there in Senegal that we've added on for numbers 22 and 23 but if you want to pray for them by name I'd encourage you to do that also I know you have the refrigerator magnets pray for Senegal and also the one that says from the ridge to the region so it'll remind you to pray each time you see those magnets now if you don't have this trifold it's okay God knows those 23 missionaries hearts and we can still pray for them but I want to encourage you to pray in very unique ways. You know, here in the United States, a lot of Americans live from paycheck to paycheck. In these developing countries, they don't live from paycheck to paycheck. They live not week to week, but day to day. Many of these regions don't have electricity. They don't have refrigeration. They've got to get their food on a daily basis. And how they typically do it, a lot of times, is whatever crafts they make, they barter with other people so they're able to feed their, uh, feed their family for that day. By them in those settings, those areas having to stay in their home, it's a desperate, desperate situation. I'm not undermining the desperate situation that we are in sometimes or how it seems like we're in here in the US. But I'm telling you all the more in some of those developing countries, pray for our missionaries there. They are being taken care of. They're nationals from all around the world. We wanna to continue to do that and we will continue to do that by the grace of God. But pray for the people they're serving because they too are finding themselves in very unique situations without a doubt. I wanna to talk to you a little bit about, um, about local missions. What does it look like to 
to really serve God and share Jesus with people around us in the current climate that we're in. Well, I wanna give you just one idea this week. We're gonna continue as we meet as a staff to develop things and, and broaden a few things, but we just wanna give you one idea today after meeting last week with multiple uh, leaders from across this church and then another time with our staff, uh, just one thing that we wanna be able to, to mention to you. Uh, I'll say this before I even unveil what that is. Uh, in a short time, uh, Bobby is going to be sending to you uh, this piece uh, via email. Now, if you do not have your name on that master list yet, that email list, I'm gonna encourage you, remember the number that I mentioned a little bit ago? It text us your email and your name so we can add you to that list because one of our means of conversation or, or of communication is that email list. We send out prayer needs, all kinds of stuff goes out on that. So if you're not yet on that email, you should be receiving probably about two emails typically or three a week with very specific prayer needs. And we're also gonna use that as one of our main uh, conduits to be able to communicate with you about other things as well. So she's going to send this that I'm getting ready to talk about in a PDF uh, where you can print it off or you can even screenshot it and be able to take it that way. Uh, and also you can look at our, uh, you can look at our Facebook page and you'll be able to see it on Facebook as well. But what it is, is it's a, your love your neighbor bingo card. Love your neighbor bingo card. Now probably what you're seeing in the graphic right now, the font is too small to be able to really read. You'll be able to obviously read it clearly whenever you print it off, screenshot it, or go on our Facebook page to look at it. But your love your neighbor bingo card just gives some simple way that we can love our neighbors in the name of Jesus in, in, in this current uh, situation we find ourselves in. As a matter of fact, on this sheet, there are 24 different ways. Now, first of all, I wanna say, let's make sure that we follow our local, state, and national guidelines. The CDC, all that different, uh, those different policies that they're putting into place are vitally important for us to love our neighbors. So right now, there are 24 ideas of how you can love your neighbors and love people around our community in the name of Jesus. And right now, they all fit within the guidelines. If those guidelines should get a little more strict, then obviously don't do anything that would go against those guidelines. But here's what I wanna ask you to do. Pray about these 24 things. The Holy Spirit may allow you to say, you might say, man, those two things, those three things, that's me. I can do that. That would work in my community. That would work in the world that I live in very easily. Do those three things. You may say you wanna do all 24. That's great, knock yourself out. But most importantly, do this. Pray and follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. You might have ideas that don't appear on this list of 24, and if you do, I wanna ask you to text us that idea because we'd love to broaden this. How can we collectively, there's wisdom and much counsel, how can we collectively come up with great ways to love our community, not just the community of the Ridge Church, but even especially in one sense, those who don't yet know Christ and are unchurched. We wanna be able to continue to extend the love of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ to those people. So if you come up with ideas that are not on this list, remember that phone number at the beginning, okay? You're gonna see it again here in a moment. Make sure you get that down because you can send those via text and we would love to be able to add your ideas in with this as well. Let me give you just a couple that's on here, okay? One says go to uh, and leave a note on the door of two or three of your neighbors. Just leave a note on the door of two or three of your neighbors. It ought to be an encouraging note. It ought to say nice things, okay? I hope you have a good relationship with your neighbors. But, but anyhow, you know, to be able to do that would be great. I think on that note, you could even put need prayer, question mark, and then put maybe your phone number since it's a next door neighbor, if it's someone you trust or have a relationship with. If it's someone you don't know, put the phone number. Remember the phone number we showed at the beginning? <laughs> put that phone number on so they can call or text should they have any kind of prayer needs because we'd love to be able to get back with them and love on them in every way we possibly can. Another idea, to give a $5 gift card to a grocery store worker. I'm gonna tell you, those people are going into work every day. They're making a way for us to still be able to eat. And I see, I see them all the time, stocking shelves, different things. Maybe you can go buy a Starbucks drive through or a Burger King drive through and buy multiple $5 gift cards and just hand those out. Now again, I would encourage you, on the back of that gift card or somewhere on that gift card, write down with a Sharpie marker, need prayer? 
question mark or have questions question mark. I mean, we don't want to have any, any kind of perception out there that we have all the answers because we certainly do not. But I tell you, it, it could lead to gospel sharing opportunities, gospel conversations. And so write that, in, in that case, I would encourage you probably not to put your phone number down if it's someone you don't know that's stocking groceries, but put the phone number down where they can call or text. Multiple of our staff, as I've already said, will receive it in the form of a text. We'll be able to get back with them. But just to be able to love people by giving a $5 gift card to a grocery store worker. You know, how about prayer walking your area or prayer driving your neighborhood as long as that's still permissible? Looking for ways that you can minister. How about writing an old-fashioned letter with an ink pen and handwriting or a postcard and sending it to some residents in a, a local nursing home and sharing the gospel with that and let them know that you're praying uh, for them. How about offering to do some yard work for a neighbor that's in need that maybe doesn't have the ability or the capability of being able to do that yard work? How about inviting someone to our live stream, even this Sunday service, uh, and, and then calling them after that live stream sometime in the afternoon to just see if, if they'd want to discuss that in any way? Or praying for our doctors or nurses that are putting themselves at risk to treat sick patients. And of course, everything we do, multiple things on this out of 24 is pray, 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 pray. And I want to encourage you, we want to not only pray, of course, for the doctors and nurses, but those vital, precious folks that are cleaning those buildings, that are taking meals into those patients, all kinds of people that are on the front lines daily to continue to love on people who are uh, the most hurting in our culture today. So those are just a few ideas out of 24. Again, if you have other ideas, let us know, text those to us, but those are just some simple ways to be able to share the love of Christ with our community. Listen, that's just one. We'll have more things coming, but that's one step toward local missions during this uh, situation that we're in. This Sunday is Easter Sunday, and we're going to do the Lord's Supper together. We're going to do communion together. It's going to be an exciting time. Now, you may say, well, how do we do that? How do we get the elements, the cracker and the juice and whatever it may be? Well, there's two ways. There's two ways to be able to do that, okay? Number one, you can actually come by the church and pick up these elements. As a matter of fact, what we have, and we have these uh, in, num in, in packages of one, and we have these in packages of two, but they're actually a little cup that's in a Ziploc bag, and they are sealed together. The cracker is on top, and the juice is on the bottom. They've been sent to us that way, already pre-prepared. They're, they're, they're guaranteed to be sterile, at least, you know, from what we've been told, and we believe that they are, of course, and so it's the safest way to be able to do this. Now, what we do, because we have some with one in it and some with two in it, if you pull in and say, I need an odd number, we give you that many of the odd numbers. If you need an even number, we give you that, that many of the, of the groups of two. So as many as you need, we're willing to do. And I want you to know, even if you're watching this today and not a member of the Ridge Church, you are more than welcome, as long as you are a follower of Jesus Christ, as long as you know you've surrendered to the fact that we're all sinners, that Jesus came and died and rose again, he rescued us, and you've surrendered, embraced him as your only way to heaven, the one true God. You are so welcome to be able to protect with this this Sunday with us, and you can even come by and get these elements if you'd like to. The time frames that you can come, we've already had a couple of those. Several came yesterday and some came today. We're going to have a time frame this evening. This is Wednesday this evening uh, from 5 to 7 p.m. That's going to be at both our Villa Ridge campus and at our Gerald campus as well. So two of our four campuses that you can go to, Villa Ridge or Gerald tonight from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. You can come tomorrow, Thursday, to the Villa Ridge campus only from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. You can come this Saturday also to the Villa Ridge campus only from 9 a.m. to noon and pick these up, all right? And let me tell you how we do this. Whenever we hand these to you, we are gloved up, we, are, we have masks on, and we even hand them to you with this little apparatus right here. Watch me fall here, all right? Uh, and so I'm telling you, we're going to do everything we possibly can to make sure we're keeping people safe in every way, okay? So, Roger, Pastor Roger talked to the local authorities around the area. They said, yeah, that's fine to do that. Uh, they, they saw no issue with it at all. So we're doing this in the safest way that we possibly can. But hear me, if you're in a setting where you're saying we really don't want to get out, here's a second way that you can have the elements for you to do the Lord's Supper. Just whatever you have at your home. If that is a cracker, if that's a corner off of a piece of bread, if that's a little bit of juice, whatever it may be. I just tell you, we serve a God that's not a legalistic God. We are in unusual times and I will promise you, 
the heart of the Lord's Supper is about worshiping that in that way of recognizing the sacrifice that Jesus has made for us. I heard stories, modern day stories, missionaries not long ago that were in prison in a, in a, a difficult country to share the gospel and they knew they were getting ready to face possibly even death but certainly serious, uh, serious trouble and they did the Lord's Supper while they were in prison together. And you know what they had in their hands? Nothing, nothing. They didn't have anything to eat, they didn't have anything to drink, but they still worshiped through the Lord's Supper whenever those times came to think about the broken body of Christ and the blood that was shed for us. So we don't serve a legalistic God. I'm begging you, if you'd rather not get out, stay home. You can still partake in this and it's gonna be an incredible time as we do this together but yet scattered over multiple counties here in Missouri. You know, I want you to know too, uh, something unique about that is here you'll be, you might be the only one in the room, just you and Jesus doing the Lord's Supper, even though we're doing it together as a church through streaming. You might be with your bride. You might be with your husband. You might be with your family. Whatever it may be, I think this is gonna be a very unique time, a very intimate time to be able to, to love Jesus in this powerful, powerful way of doing communion together here on Easter Sunday. And we are so, so excited about that. Now listen, we're going to stream this Sunday at 9.30, so tune in. Now I know you can always watch it later on in the week as well, but I think there is something kind of unique of again, knowing that even though we're, we're right now at this point, we're scattered, we're still together and uh, we're all watching this together at the same time. So if you can tune in this Sunday morning, Easter Sunday at 9.30, and it'll be an incredible time. Church family, I cannot tell you how blessed we are by you. You're just an incredible, incredible group of people. Uh, Pastor Roger has called several of our people who are shut in, and I don't know if there's been a time yet where they didn't say to him, we've already had two to four other phone calls from church members just checking in. You're being the hands and feet of Jesus. Continue to do that. Check in on our folks, but remember as well as you've always done for decades around this place, check in on people too that are unchurched. Check in on people that, as far as you know, don't have yet a relationship with Christ and just build those bridges to them. And remember this phone number. Showing it one more time, and here's the reason why. I'll close with this. If you're out there, you might be a believer, or you might be checking this out just for a few moments, and right now you're not 100% sure that you have a relationship with Christ. I can just tell you, if you're lonely, if you're battling depression, uh, you are not broken. I just wanna encourage you, do not walk alone. Call this number, text this number. Again, remember, you'll get a voicemail if you call it. It doesn't mean we're not there. It comes to multiple of our phones in the form of a text so someone can get back with you quickly. I've battled dark depression in my life. I don't know too many people really that have not. It's no different than sugar diabetes or any other thing. It's a real life situation that's going on. And I know sometimes you can be in such a dark place that you don't wanna pick up a phone. You don't wanna text anybody. You don't wanna hear another voice. We're begging you. If you're a Ridge member, if you're not a member of the Ridge Church, regardless of your situation, text us, call us. Don't walk alone. And then church family, continue to reach out to, especially those around us, that as far as we know, don't yet have a relationship with Christ. There's great hope, there's great hope. Can't wait to be able to uh, stream with you together this Sunday on Easter Sunday. God bless you, let me pray, and then we'll close. Father, we do just say thank you, thank you, thank you for being such a faithful God. And Lord, you're amazing. You're amazing because you really are a God that brings peace where there should be none. You really are a God that brings joy even whenever happiness is flown out a window. God, you're, you're a God that allows us to know purpose in life. And God, I just know that I know myself too well. And I, I'm a wicked person. But you accept us. You're willing to meet us at the point of our need. And you met me right where I was. You love me too much to keep me the way I, I am. But even that's this incredible act of love as you continue to grow us. Father, I fall so short still to this day, but you just keep hanging on to me. And that's the love that you extend to everybody that just simply embraces you. So Father, may we, those that have already embraced you, it's not by any merit of our own, not by any good works of our own, not because we deserve it, but God, may we thank you for accepting us and making a way that we could have a relationship with you and one day even a home in heaven. But God, for those yet that maybe have not, they're precious and you love them. 
You got all these things that we're talking about. You know, you have questions on the back of a gift card and giving it to someone, maybe setting it on the shelf six feet away and say, I left that there for you. However we want to do that. It's not just so some, some bait and hook. It's not some kind of bait and switch thing. It's we want to love people because they're real live human beings that matter matter whether they ever respond to you or not they matter and we want to love them and we know you love them infinity times more than we and so God would you help us to build bridges and God we pray that they would one day respond to you but God may we be kind and just love people where they are because you're such a good God that loved us where we are Lord we love you we thank you we ask it all in the strong name of our King Jesus. Amen. God bless you, Ridge Church.